Hello, and welcome, to Unexpected History. Most people understand that, although the books and movies are intriguing, exciting, and often horrifying, the science behind the Jurassic Park franchise isn't real. Well, the science is real, it just isn't as possible as the movies and novels present it to be. It's highly doubtful, almost certainly impossible, that there will be packs of raptors roaming the landscape in search of their next meal, or tyrannosaurs towering over a triceratops, preparing to do battle, in either the near, or distant, future. DNA has a half-life, meaning that about every 521 years, the bonds that hold DNA molecules together break down by 50%, give or take. Calculations show that DNA completely breaks down in approximately 6.8 million years, which is just over 10% of the time since dinosaurs went extinct. That means there's no dino DNA extant in the world today, barring some extremely unlikely paradigm shift in scientific possibility. No dino DNA means, well, no dinos. But would you be surprised if you were told that some genetic engineers, with help from at least one top-level paleontologist, have successfully engineered some dinosaur traits back into chickens? It may sound like a joke, maybe about a chickenosaurus, but it is, in fact, absolutely true. In the early 90s, right around the time the original Jurassic Park was released in theaters, researchers at the University of Wisconsin, engineered chickens that had teeth. Although these teeth weren't strong enough to break through the bird's beaks, still they were a significant step towards more recent developments. Dr. Jack Horner, the Jurassic franchise's consulting paleontologist, has worked with teams at Harvard and Yale to do just that, by engineering a snout, rather than a beak, to form. Horner called the achievement a proof of concept. Obviously, the science behind it is more complicated than presented here, but simply put, the researchers turned on the gene for a snout, and turned off the gene for a beak. A snout seems like a good place to keep teeth, certainly better than a beak. They're also working to unfuse the bones in a chicken's wings to devolve them back into arms and hands, which, according to Horner, might be relatively easy, with the same techniques as used for the beak to snout transition. Just turn off the gene for fusing the bones that make up the wings. The one thing researchers are having some difficulties with is getting a bird to grow a long tail. It turns out that making a chicken grow a crocodilian tail is somewhat more difficult than making a snout form where a beak should be, or turning wings into arms. Although they've had some, albeit inconsistent, success with it, the most they've been able to get is 14 vertebrae, basically the same as what a bird already has, although fused together at the end, unlike birds. The difficulty arises because the tail forms while in the embryonic stage, which is so tiny that it's hard to see. Researchers aren't sure if they've made the tail longer, or simply moved the pelvis, but it appears that birds have lost the gene, or genes, necessary to grow more vertebrae. So, where does that leave us? In truth, dinosaurs will never again roam the Earth, with the exceptions of those that are still here with us. Birds, and to a lesser extent, crocodilians, lizards, and snakes are, in a sense, dinosaurs. Or at least related to them, particularly birds. Birds evolved in the Jurassic period, which began about 200.1 million years ago, after the Triassic, and ended around 145 million years ago. Dinosaurs evolved about 50 million years prior, making birds and dinosaurs more or less contemporaneous. As current scientific understanding has it, birds evolved from some of the earliest dinosaurs from the clade, Paravez, which includes some of the most popular known species, like Velociraptors and Dromaeosaurs. For all intents and purposes, birds are dinosaurs. That said, since birds share many of the same genes as dinosaurs, and being closely related to them, they are the perfect starting point for genetically engineering something that might resemble the theropod dinosaurs that once roamed the Earth, minus the gargantuan proportions, thankfully. Sauropods like Diplodocus are most certainly out of the question, as they have no living descendants. The real question is, should we? To paraphrase Ian Malcolm, scientists are so preoccupied to see if they can, they didn't stop to think if they should. Now it's time for you to give us your opinion. Do you think we should try to engineer dino-like animals? What are the ethical considerations? Why should there be any considerations? Let me know in the comments below, and if you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. As always, thank you for watching Unexpected History. It's like regular history, just unexpected. During a break from making this video, I came across a story in which a team of scientists from the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology, or IVPP, 
of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, together with others from the Shandong Tianyu Museum of Nature, or STM, have recently published a paper which detailed an important discovery. Very well-preserved cartilage cells from a 125-million-year-old fossil of a Jurassic-age dinosaur, Catapteryx. They've isolated these cells, which contain some nuclei, nuclei that have some remnants of organic molecules and chromatin. Chromatin, for those who don't know, is present in all living organisms, and is made of tightly packed DNA molecules. There is a distinct possibility, however unlikely, that there may actually be Caudipteryx DNA present in these cells. Maybe we shouldn't completely discount some form of Jurassic Park just yet.